Okay, moving on to the bodice of the dress, I've got my photos here that I'm using off the computer, which are very helpful. It's a quick close up. And this shows the, the inside of it, which was an extremely helpful photograph. I will go into this in a bit more detail soon in the video. And I've started off with a um, Jean Honeysett book I've got, um, 1500s to 1800s. And this pattern here was the closest to what I need. So I went ahead and I scaled up all the pattern pieces. I'll lay those out in a second. Uh, this scale is uh, two, sorry, five centimeters or two inch is one square. So it's very easy to scale up her patterns. I found them very helpful. Sometimes just as a good starting point if they're not quite what I need. So there we go. Okay, so just a quick glance of all the pattern pieces I started off with, and this is the strap. Uh, when you print these out, they come without seam allowance, so you have to remember to add the seam allowance. Uh, these finish in strange places on this to me, because usually I'm a piece here would continue right up to, say, there or further. Or this piece would actually carry on to about there when I'm doing later periods so this is quite odd to actually finish a quarter way down from the top so but also eventually we'll need some more allowance on the bottom for tassets and allowance around the armhole here for turning in but I'll go into that a bit later in the video Hello everyone and welcome to the making of my 17th century gown based on the one film in the iron mask. Um, I've got here my pattern pieces. I started off with um, the pattern pieces from the Jean Hunnisett period costume and stage screen book, um, women's dress 15 to 1800. Uh, so that pattern is inside this book and these are the original pieces and they all come without seam allowances and you can see here the revised pieces that have come up that were made to fit me so although the front and the back sections didn't really alter too much um, I raised that seam a bit to match the original and um, that one's almost the same on the side back and the side front is again more or less the same um, but I've had to add more to the bottom because I need tassets which we will see later on in the video and I've already done all my markings here I made a start for where the boning channels will go and obviously the strap shape is altered significantly from the original piece at the top here which is labelled E um, but this is all, as I say, this has got seam allowance added to all around the edges, so it will end up looking a bit narrower eventually. So when we come to the front here, I've added extra here that will be used to make a liner piece to neaten off the edge on the spoon shaped part of the front section of the bodice here. So basically, it didn't alter too much apart from adding the seam allowances an extra on the bottom and an extra centimetre around the armholes. And then of course on the front here I've added extra there um, because that is where my seam will be and that will be turned under to match it to knit in the armhole edge. And then I've added more around the top as well because that will be turned over. So those are my pieces ready to go. So here I've done a mock-up, it is in fact my third mock-up. <laughs> no, not the first, not the second, this is a third one because I was desperately trying to get things right that I needed tweaking and especially the front here. This is even going to go down a little bit longer than it is on this one. 
and here you can see me working out where everything's got to be split to go over the bum roll and I even yes I've gone ahead here and I've started on a sleeve <laughs> which will be in another tutorial video or part two or whatever okay so I'm more or less happy with this now so I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting and I'll go over my fabric okay so I went over two or three different ways I could possibly do this um, but the method I've settled on will be in this video and I'm using a line which is a very nice canvas it's quite thin it's it's strong yet flexible um, it's not as thick and heavy as some others I've used I think I got from Abercam Fabrics this one is from here I just go to computer I got it off eBay. eBay and I bought it off this seller fabric guys online and it's called 100% cotton canvas plain quality fabric it's 44 inches wide and I got it in colour ivory but they do do other colours as well So it's not too heavy and it's not too too lightweight it's just perfect so it won't be ultra thick I'll just put that to the side uh, I only bought a meter of this because that's all I need but your measurements might be longer bigger in fact, you might need a bit more or whatever so these are my pattern pieces all ready to go for my liner and I'll just show you the front section here so I cut two of each out and it doesn't matter which way because it's the same both sides so you don't have to keep watching that. Right. sorry about that my wonderful mum just interrupted okay so I have two halves um, and I first of all pin them together I've done that same for the back and side front and the side back so each section has got two that I've pinned together so you treat it as one piece okay so I hope that's clear to each one okay very simple I've pinned them together and you can see here I've gone ahead and I'm starting to just lightly tack so I can take some of the pins out make sure it's flat as possible and they all meet up so I say I've just done very large tacking I've gone quite a way out so it'd be easier or you can actually tack in um, a bit further than your seam allowance obviously you don't want to tack on the seam allowance which uh, to me is a centimeter and a half in so yeah you don't want to do that so either to the side of your seam allowance or to the side inwards from your seam allowance okay so I've just got to go and tap all the rest of my pieces like so okay for the next part I've started putting in my boning channels which I already planned out on my mock-up so I know exactly where to put them I've done them approximately what was it about eight eight millimeters my boning is five mil wide but I've done eight because I meant to say sorry before I did my boning channels I measured my seam allowance around the pieces My seam allowance is about one and a half centimetres so I've marked one and a half in from the edge and from the top here as well is one and a half centimetres in and then one and a half centimetres in there and I haven't needed to do the bottom so I've left that 
And I did that on all my pieces so that when I came to mark my boning channels I knew I wasn't going to get too close to the seam. Okay, moving on now, I've just started doing my channels here on my pieces. Uh, I will do a detailed photograph um, later showing you the boning directions I've decided to go with. Typically a lot of these were fully boned. Um, looking at the examples in the Jean, um, sorry, Janet Arnold book. But uh, I decided not to do fully boned because my stays are already fully boned. So i put in just enough to keep it in shape and I marked my seam allowance around the outside first so I make sure I wasn't going too close there and I didn't want the bone in too close to the seam because obviously I've got to split it there as well for um, tacits that will be left over later um, and I've gone along the top so I've sealed those and I've gone over it on the machine quite a few times So that's where I'm at at the moment. So you really need to make sure that your two pieces were put together. I'll use this, I'll go on to this back piece because it's a lot easier. There we go. Um, on the back here I've made my first channel. Um, and then I'll have the eyelets here. Like so. So just make sure that your two layers are put together and match up on each side like so. Okay, so so my boning channels and the boning I'm using is this synthetic whale bone and it's five millimeters wide. This is brilliant for straight lines it's not as heavy as the metal stuff and it's not as weak as the plastic bridal boning I find this very good so I'm just pushing this up these channels now I've cut these just so they finish about a centimeter or so above the bottom so that's very important make sure you don't cut it so it finishes all the way you want to have some space at the bottom and this is very easy to cut with a pair of scissors and you'll need a file just to file the ends like so so they're not so sharp or you can put some clear tape on as well so we'll just push that up as far as it'll go obviously making sure that you've sewn across the top here so it doesn't go right away through and I'll be doing that for every single section say two of each one for each side like so and the whalebone I got off this website menacaverdesign.co.uk and it comes in different widths and there's another listing as well for different thicknesses as well and you can buy in 25 or 50 meter lengths okay so the next thing I've done is I've tacked all my pieces together I'll show you one here you go I've done in blue thread and um, so I've not actually sewn these properly as yet so I've just mushed all the pieces together so they're now as one I've actually tried this on and as I've already done a a mock-up earlier of it all um, we already had some marks to go by where my waist was where to cut the tassets to but I still tried it on I tried it on with the stays and the bum roll and mum uh, took some measurements of where to cut and it's best to take it off then and cut it flat on the table so you can see that we've cut up to where my waist would be like so And the same on the other side as well. So that's where we are at this point. I am going to um, 
sew these pieces together properly on the machine and I'm going to overlock at these edges as well but I won't be able to go to the corners because that requires quite a bit of skill on an overlocker to do that and it's very difficult so I will be overlocking these all together and then I will be hand whipping um, with some thicker thread into the corners there so because otherwise if you leave it like that it's just going to tear which you don't want so that's the next step to sew them together and then overlock these together as one piece uh, yeah okay okay so I've now finished whipping around the edges here uh, the hardest part is going around the curve here um, it's not the neatest but it will stop it tearing in the corner there which we really don't want to do okay so I finished up with my uh, whipping stitch which isn't the best I know but it will stop it tearing into that corner there and um, I've moved on to the front here and on the seam I've sewn a piece of bias uh, to put a piece of bone in which I had handy from some old um, cream line hoop wire I bought a while ago from my Cinderella uh, dad cut it and filed it and I've just put some tape over the the end and then I shall just slot that so it in like so Okay, so now I sealed that in. I remember to start, I've started about two centimetres from the bottom, uh, just being a bit extra careful because I'm going to be lining it soon. So I've taken a bit of extra caution there, gone a bit higher up than I probably need to. And a centimetre and a half down from the top because that will be turned over eventually, like so. So you can see now why I've left the excess around the edge here. So moving on to the front, I've now got to go ahead and make a liner piece for this to turn to the inside so I can neaten the edge off. Okay, so next we need to line the end here. So I've made this template piece and once I've got the piece I wanted I've made a cut out and I've ironed it down the middle just to help me keep the centre line. So next I'm going to place it on and place that crease over like so. I've made it slightly higher than I need to because we only really need to go to about here. Um, as you can see this is slightly out of shape so I'll just move that down and I'll recut it after. So as long as that centre line matches the line of there like so and I'll just pin it just as an extra precaution I've not only pinned it in places but I've also tapped it down with some stitching along the edge just to help really hold it there okay so I've now sewn the lining piece onto the um, main bodice uh, ideally I should have overlocked this edge first so I've used a bit of fabric glue to stop it from fraying so I've now turned it the right way out um, before you do that you just clip into the corners but don't cut through the stitching I forgot to video this and I really don't want to push it back the other way <laughs> so, uh, so that liner piece is now sewn on so that neatens that out and makes it nice and neat and it's very important you get right to you sew right to the very part where it starts to split to the seam there uh, next you can see I've got these that naturally sort of want to turn in on itself so I'm going to turn those edges in and, and then I'm going to just cap stitch it to the back there so then that will need to nut and that will need to nut and it look nice like so. So that is the plan next. Ok 
Okay, so next I'm kneading in off the other side of this. And I've decided there's a few options I could have done. Uh, but I've just decided to turn it in and uh, catch stitch it on the back there. Or I could just sew a line down the bottom, though it is quite chunky and there's a bone in the way. So, um, yeah, so basically just turn it up like so. It's a bit difficult doing this with one hand, but you get the idea. So then it's nice and neat.